Welcome back to One Faith, everybody. One Faith. Uh, it's your boy T. Uh, we got my boy Marcus here. David is our producer for today. He, um, you know, y'all know we have Terrence. Terrence is still with us. He uh-huh. is not. He is not perished. He's still here. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably drowning in. No, that's going to sound terrible. Wow. <laughs> 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 wow. gonna, I have to say no Diddy after that one, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but, I but you know he, you know Terrence is not currently fasting with us, so uh-huh. he's um he's currently um knee deep in. He's some doing meat. ministry, so he's he's, he's doing he's ministry. ministry. Yeah, he's, doing right, ministry. He's, he's cooking. He's cooking, y'all. He's cooking right, for his daddy. It. Hallelujah! So his, his daddy birthday, so he just he cooking for dad. He cooking for pop. So we got uh-huh. David with us, and David has been doing a solid job. We thank God Shout for out David. To David. You know, because there has been an attack on uh, the production yeah. teams Shout all out. over the place. I was Come watching on. the video the other day what? of a pastor at, at the um, at the AIM conference, mm. and he was he he got on to the sound man. He yeah. said, "We need to fix." These mics. I saw, yeah, I remember. That. <laughs> I remember that. He said, I don't you know, know what's going on, but we need to fix. They, these they mics. under a lot of pressure. They you under know. a lot of pressure. But it's all right. They but as a, a former production lead, uh-huh. you know, I'm here to stand up for them. Oh, stand up and say, leave us alone, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> We doing our best. Come on. Okay. We doing the best we can okay. with what we got. That's it. Okay. Even Trump attacked the 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 um the production team at the NABJ I conference. Am done. I don't know what's going on <laughs> with these mics. You know, y'all t- it to be thirty five minutes. Hey, but, <laughs> but to his defense, I'm there was some audio. There was some audio issues. Uh, come on. <laughs> but y'all know how we get down. Yes, so. sir. Um, we thank God for you all on today. All mm-hmm. right, enough with the um churchy pleasantry, pleasantries, <laughs> colloquialisms, and all that good stuff. Right. But um, all right. So I wanted to shift a little bit and talk about spiritual maturity, mm-hmm. um, and just growing spiritually as believers. Um, uh, one of the things that I know that a lot of people. In this current day and age, I I recognize that people are growing spiritually. They're growing at a rate that I want to say is almost commendable, Mm. Um, especially seeing people denouncing things. Uh, A friend of mine um, had, well, I mean, well, this is way before, um, what's her name? Um, Brenda Palmer that came out and was denouncing... um, she was an AKA, right? Yeah, she was an AKA, and she denounced that, which is like, hey, I've a few people I know have done that. Yeah, which is that's why I I, yeah. I feel like this because um, we did. I know I was talking to someone about um, about denouncing, and a friend of mine, um, she uh, was a former AKA, and she denounced as well too. Um, and she said that it came from just. Wanting to just be more connected to God. Sure. Um, and there's a lot of that going on. And I feel like, you know, for those who are still, you know, in fraternities and sororities, you know, I'm, I'm not here to condemn or judge or anything like that. Um, I feel like it should be applauded when people take a stand for God and say that they want to become closer to God. And they feel like this thing may be a hindrance or may be a detour or may be a barrier that's keeping them from further, um, I would say furthering their relationship with God. Um, anytime you make that sound decision, in my opinion, for God, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Um, you know, regardless of where you stand on either aisles of the line with that, you know, I know a lot of great people who pledge. Mm-hmm. Um, I know a, a, a many, many great people and we're great friends to this day. I mean, one of my best homies, you know, he's an alpha man. He's been trying to get me to serve alpha Forever, (laughs) not serve, but pledge alpha forever Mm -hmm. when I was in college. Um, But personally, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a Q dog for all the wrong reasons. Um, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So we know. (laughs) But, you know, thank God, you know. Um, thank God for grace. I, I know a lot of cues who are just great men and great people. I mean, and it, it is their conviction, bro. Right. Like I think is exactly is it's a conviction, you know, because we're not in it enough to know anything mm-hmm. that may be happening. We do know that there are great people, like you stated. So, um, just to kind of piggyback and you know back you up, you know, I ain't gonna leave you out there. You know, it's it 
if a person is denouncing something, something in their Holy Ghost mm-hmm. wasn't sitting right. right. Maybe they seen something that they just didn't like. Um, however, if we're not in it, you know what I mean? So we're not, there is no judgment, but we're talking about spiritual maturity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Growing and, and growing spiritually, it, it sometimes you're going to be um, the Elijah that stands against all the bells of the, uh, the prophets mm-hmm. of Baal. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're going to be the only, and here's the thing what people have to understand is that, you know, a lot of these um, characters or real people, but you know, we know them as characters in the word of God. Um, these people weren't really popular. Right. Mm. And I think, there is a a disconnect because uh because you hear your some of your favorite preachers talk about the things that they've experienced you have to understand when your preachers or your or the people that are talking about these people they're talking about the reason why you're able to connect with them is because these people in the word of god were living this yeah and because they were living this then in turn, it didn't look good when they was when they was in it. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel good while they was in it. Right. You know, can you imagine being someone like Ezekiel and God telling you, listen, this is what I need you to do mm-hmm. and make yourself look crazy. At that point, you ain't concerned about being a prophet. Mm-hmm. You, no. you, you're not concerned about certain things that people are, you know, trying to become or want to be so bad nowadays mm-hmm. because spiritual maturity. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Spiritual maturity is being able to obey God even when it's not popular, even when it's not popular. And I think that's the biggest thing, because even in this social media age, when we just want to be famous quick and we want everything to be popping and whatnot, it's so easy to to think that we're mature because of our following or because of the many people that follow us and whatnot. There's so many mature people. There's so many great people spiritually that I know. They ain't got they ain't got no follow. They may not even be on social media at all. Like personally, I know that like these are great people. Um, and so, and even to your point, I'm glad you said that because one thing I've I, I've always made notice, and it's in First Samuel. When you look at Samuel and you look at his story, um, the Bible says that as Samuel grew, as he grew older. Um, after, you know, after um, being with Eli um, and after um, the whole, if you're not familiar with the Samuel story, uh, what happened was, sorry, that man caught me on guard. He did a whole split and I was just like, <laughs> 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 this man got the Olympics playing <laughs> while we're doing the he, podcast he threw me off. and he's going to stop <laughs> and look at this man do a split. It threw me off. <laughs> Somebody pray. Somebody teach your prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we touch him now, Lord. Please, <laughs> go ahead. Go help, ahead. Lord, help. But no, but um, but First Samuel. Um, after um, Samuel, as a kid, as a boy, he wakes up, um, and the Lord is speaking to him, and he doesn't recognize that it's God's voice. And then Eli tells him, "Hey, go back. It is God's voice." And these and the other, and then um, he instructs him how to do that. And then the Bible says that Samuel grew. <clears throat> both in favor with what God and man. Um, and I feel like, and the thing about Eli that was so, I mean, I'm sorry, the thing about Samuel that was so special about him in contrary to, or in contrast to Eli's sons was that Eli's sons, they were sons of priests. So mm-hmm. they were already known. Mm-hmm. They, everybody knew who they were, but they were not living up to the, to the same standard as Eli was as being a priest. So, I mean, God had already was pissed off with them. He said, they're going to die anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but Samuel was his characteristic was that he was completely humble. Mm -hmm. He was so humble. People didn't know him because of that, but he grew in favor because of his humility. Come on, bro. I feel like when you grow in spiritual maturity in Christ, you grow in humility. You don't want the spotlight on you at all times. You don't want people to be all up in your business at all times. When you grow spiritually, you should be going, honestly, you should be going deeper and deeper and deeper in God as you grow spiritually. And you should want to be so out of the spotlight, so out of frame and out of tune everything to where you are so in tune with God that you don't care whatever is going on around you. Let me, let me tell you something. People who truly 
are desiring a relationship with God because that's what spiritual maturity is. People who are truly desiring go through so much yeah. that it gets to a point where your main focus, and I'm speaking from experience, that's why this, yeah. um, your main focus is number one, you know, God help me to get through what you're, you're challenging me with, because here's the thing in order. Yes, Lord, in order for God to use you mm-hmm. or for you to be used and to be able to utilize his power, there are certain tests that you have to pass yeah. within yourself as far as your character, because he's not going to trust you with his power mm-hmm. to help certain people uh, or to help, people who are really truly in need of him Mm -hmm. that need that connection that um, can't get to him or feel like they, they want to get to him tangibly, but we're the only tangible thing. Yeah. So what he, he has to, we have to be in a a humility mindset to be able to um, number one, pass the test that we have to go through. But by the time you go through those experiences, Mm -hmm. by the time you go through those tests to, to piggyback off of what you're saying, you don't need the spotlight. You don't, you just, you just want to be able to do his will Mm -hmm. because the people who had power with God Mm -hmm. wasn't worried about the spotlight. Right. Okay. Because let's, let's talk about, uh, uh, Jonah. Yeah. Let's talk about Jonah. Mm -hmm. Someone who was gifted. Mm-hmm. Naturally, mm-hmm. ran mm-hmm. from God. Mm-hmm. God, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this with these people. These people have been trifling, right. this, that, and the third. And you know good and well. Good and well. If I go there, they're gonna turn, and I don't. I don't even want it. I want to be stubborn. I want to be stuck in my way. Right. However, there is an anointing on your life. You're you're spiritually mature enough to see. It. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. You you understand what's going on, and I need to use you for this moment right. because number one, they're not going to expect it from someone who is outside of right. who my culture mm-hmm. or outside of what we're used to. So that's that's another thing in spiritual maturity. You can go to any environment. Yeah. And, and and be impactful because you're so close with God. You're so in tune with God. You're so intentional about God. Yeah. Now, you may not always want to do what God tells you to do, but if essentially because his will is his will, yeah. you're going to do his will. Yeah. Yes, I think that's the thing. A lot of people that are, I would say, babes in Christ as they mature. It's important for us as spiritually mature people that we conduct ourselves and live ourselves in a manner so that we don't become a stumbling block for the young babes in Christ. Um, And the biggest way that we do that is by guarding how we watch certain things, guarding our speech, guarding how we have whole different conversations, even guarding how we present ourselves on social media or in public. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that like a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to give you the real me. That's that's great. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I I give people the real me all the time. Okay, Uh, but I also have to be mindful (laughs) of those who watch Mm -hmm. who are younger than me Mm -hmm. because, you know, we have a younger following. We have people that watch us. Who are younger than us mm-hmm. And they look at us because of the fact that they know It's like oh well I respect your walk It was like I want to be like you Or I want, I want to be able to walk the way that you walk mm-hmm. How can we do that If we you know out here Just living any kind of way yes, sir. Doing things that is contrary to what the God of the Bible Has told us to do yes, sir. To live and to act and to be um, I think it's so important I know that Titus and Timothy Those books are really reserved for um, For the Pastors and preachers and for those who seek the office of those um, of those positions. But I really feel like Christians should read those passages as well, too, and understand what kind of character we should have as Christians, like just in general. Like, yeah, our our title, yeah, our 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 our, um, assignment may not be as weighty or heavy or whatever. But what we (laughs) but what we do understand is that. I say this all the time as mature believers, as mature Christians, you are a minister to someone. Mm -hmm. Someone's watching you and someone's learning about God through your life. We are like many ministers around here just ministering to people all over the place. And how you live your life is indicative of that. Like think about all the people that you encounter on a day to day basis, Mm -hmm. all the people that you come across. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the times people will remember. And this is a famous quote by my Angelo. 
people will remember how you make how you how you made them feel mm-hmm. rather than what you did for them. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times you they'll remember what you did or how you made them feel when you came around them and they'll know that there's a change or there's something that's different about you than it is about somebody else. And all that comes from spiritual maturity. So. And it's amazing because you have a lot a lot of people who are Walking in the integrity of the title, but don't have the title. Yeah. You know, people who have the title, feeling mm. entitled, mm. Mm. are not operating in what the title is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, uh, again, it's a walk. It's a walk. It's a, it's a process. You know what I mean? See, I don't have to, I don't feel condemned about the choices I've made now mm-hmm. because there is a conviction. Yeah. I want to do better because I know what it's like to choose other things. Yeah. When it, when it came to my struggles, when it came to certain addictions or things that I enjoyed um, from a fleshly standpoint. Yeah. Because here's the thing. If we're going, if we're going biblically, here we go. If we go to Romans, the seventh chapter, oh. you know, and, and on, Paul. Paul is dealing with who here. Here's the thing. Before I get to the scripture, let's think about Paul's life before he was Paul. He was Saul. He was walking in. He was walking in the statue or the standard of the title, but he, his view was skewed. Yeah. He, he was looking at things the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So he, he was trying to be a perfectionist, but he had an understanding of certain things and God has switched that thing around. So by the time, you switch that thing around and now you have the Pauline epistles. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you he, so it was already in him. Yeah. He was already operating in it. It's just his view was wrong. So there is a lot of people who are out here in the world mm-hmm. that has the integrity, mm-hmm. that has the discipline, that has the conviction, mm-hmm. but their view is skewed. Yeah. But uh Paul uh in the book of Romans, let's see, where can I start? I can start uh he talks about the sinful nature. Mm-hmm. And in spiritual maturity, the things that we're going to face um, when you when you're trying to grow spiritually, you're going to face you're going to come into an understanding of what the sin really is. Yeah. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill, fulfill it. it. Yep. So when you get more in him, you're starting to see more of that sinful nature. But here's the thing where we have to be encouraged and those that are new to being a believer. What you have to be uh, understand is he says. Where can where can I start? He says, "For I, for we know that the law is spiritual, mm-hmm. but I am carnal, sold under sin." Yeah. So, in other words, if you go to, if I connect the scripture, um, David said, he says, we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So he says, for we know that the law is spiritual. When God created that law, it's so that we can have boundaries. There had to be boundaries. Now, no one was able to do, like, to do it. However, and when they struggle time and time again and time and time again, thank God for Jesus fulfilling the law. Let's keep reading. Right. He says, but I am carnal, sold under sins for that which I do, I I, that which I do, I allow not for what I would do that do I not. So in other words, let me say it like this, because it's a whole bunch of these thousands and those. <laughs> and I like King James version. I'm just an old school guy. So in other words, he's saying he says, I know the right things to do. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how to do it because I desire the wrong thing. Right. I'm desiring to uh, to have uh, to do fornication because yeah. I've been doing it for so long. I'm, right. I'm desiring to roll that blunt and smoke it because I've been doing it so long. There are certain things. And even as Christians are and people who've grown up in the church, yeah. there are things that you want to do because you've been you've been accustomed to doing it. It started off as something recreational yep. and then it turned into something else. So uh, he's like he said, I know. No, I can't do that, but I'm still doing it anyway. Right. So for that which I do, I allow not for what I would do that I do not. But what I hate that I that do I. He's saying so. In other words, he says I don't want to do this no more. Right. I want to spiritually grow. Yeah. I want to be past this point. Yeah. How do I get past this point? If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is that it is good. So in other words, I know that there is a godly side to yeah. me. There is there is a moral understanding that I cannot live and stay in this sin. Right. He said because, and I'm not going to keep going because I'm going to end up doing a whole Bible uh, class, but teach us. Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when you look at that scripture, you have to understand the reason why spiritual maturity 
is important. The reason why um, spiritual maturity is needed is because we are all fighting against something. Yeah. And the whole purpose of for the enemy to keep us in our sin nature, to keep us in cycles is so that we don't fulfill our mission as yeah. believers. Yeah. So that we're not, but in, in that, in our suffering or in our struggling, we can be great witnesses Yeah, because I am here standing today knowing that God delivered me yeah. from certain things that I didn't think was possible to be delivered from being in the church, preaching the word of God. I didn't think it was possible. Right. Let me be real with yeah. you because it's, it's, it's challenging, especially when you're used to coping with certain things, yeah. when you're used to going to certain things because, and you know why it all stems down to our lack of trust in God. God yep. We trust more so in the fix more than our savior. Yeah. Because we not, we're not here. We're going back to the last episode because we're not mentally stable. We're yeah. not mentally prepared yeah. to handle the pressure. Yeah. So we look for a way of escape mm-hmm. outside of the pressure. When God says, I will provide a, a way, way of, of escape. escape. Yep. So we got to utilize what we have. However, sometimes when you're feeling that pressure, God wants you to sit in it mm-hmm. because your ministry is being tried by fire. Like Job said, uh, he made the statement, the, though I'm going through certain things and I'm going through the fire. He said, when I come out, I'll come out as pure gold. Yeah. You come out as gold when you when as I embraced every situation this year mm-hmm. that I've gone through mm-hmm. and I did not utilize and I'm gonna give a story real quick. It's very is 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 it blesses me. I did not utilize my what I call my own personal escape. Mm-hmm. I found myself growing in God even wow. more. There is a confidence, mm-hmm. there is a boldness, personal testimony. Mm-hmm. I got hit with something very hard, and it caused me to almost go into a panic attack, bro. Mm. Caused me to go into this panic attack. Here I am. I'm a preacher of the word of God, but yet and still, listen, you're, I'm not exempt from the enemy trying me. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm going through all of this and I'm feeling the pressure. Mm-hmm. And here, here's my thing. I wanted so bad to roll a blunt mm. at that point. I don't care who you are. If you ever smoked before, Okay, mm-hmm. and you got under so much pressure that Come you on. just don't know what to do. Come on, I got to the point where I wanted to roll a blunt. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something, and I was under that pressure for literally a day and a half. Mm-hmm. Here's the unique thing that happened. What happened? I embraced it all. <laughs> I embraced it to the next day, and the moment I was getting ready, because I know somebody that knows somebody. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You know the plug. Yeah, I know the plug. <laughs> And I was getting ready, and I actually, I was getting ready to text the individual like, yo, I need this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. The moment I did that was the moment whatever that spirit of torment lifted Lifted off off of you. Wow. At that moment, and then God says, now choose which one. Mm. Wow. At that point, I had Mm. to choose. Spiritual maturity is what we're talking about. I had to choose who was God. Yeah. Oof. Oof, that's good. I had to choose who was God at that moment because I was ready because and I realized that I've been choosing we for a long mm, time. Mm, yeah. And at that moment I grew and when I grew past that, mm-hmm. there was a confidence in me that is different now. Yeah. There was a depth of trusting God that is different now. Yeah. Because I know that those storms will come, but yeah. in the middle of a storm, peace, peace. is still. Mm. Come on. That's good. Now, before y'all come for my brother, because <laughs> I know some of y'all, y'all, y'all not bold enough to say the stuff that y'all go through and y'all struggle with. Y'all still succumb to alcohol. Uh-huh. Y'all still succumb to different women the or thing. men, because we know there's some people out there that like to go both ways. But okay. the thing is, it's like, you know, like you said, which will you choose? Come on. Will you choose God? Or we Barabbas. continue to choose, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or Barabbas? <laughs> Come on now, and it's so it's so good because it's like as you grow spiritually, you understand that yes, we are not. The Bible says Jesus said 
that he allows the rain to fall on the sun, or he allows the sun to fall on the, on the just and the unjust, meaning that we are not exempt from yes, going sir. through things in life. Yes, we are not exempt from ex- experiencing trials and tribulations. We are not exempt from suffering. It means that even though we go through these things, God is always with us. Like we just said, he's Jehovah Shammah, but he's always going to be there. And he's always going to, like you said, provide a way of escape. Yes, sir. All you have to do is choose him. Yes, sir. And it's so funny because I remember um, back in 2019, I know I talk about 2019 a lot. 2019 was a very, you know, eye opening year for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but a lot had take had taken place and we made the decision to move. And when we made that decision to move it. It, it it troubled us so much because of the fact that um, we were leaving something that was familiar to go into something that's unfamiliar. And the thing is, is that God was telling us all the time, the whole time, go. go. God was telling me to go. And the thing is, I was so scared because of the fact that I was worried about what other people would say, what other people would do. And even though in that fear, I still made the decision, people still did whatever they want to do. So I'm going to say this right now. And I heard somebody say this to my wife the other day, do it scared anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so funny because like so many times we so afraid to do things. We're so afraid to go to take that leap. We're, we're afraid to go forth in what God has told us to do. Yes, but I want to encourage you to do it afraid anyway, because yes, when you do it afraid, God is going to be there with you the whole time. Yes, uh, and it's so funny because when we made that decision to leave, when we made that decision to leave this one particular church. It came with so much hell mm. that we could not really understand why we were going through the things that we were going through. Yes, sir. But if you were to, and I was telling my friend this the other day, and the Lord had brought to my um, remembrance, and he showed me, he said, when you made that decision back in 2019 to leave, you did not account for all the things that was going to take place five years later. And looking back five years ago from what took place in 2019 to where we are today, it's like I look at my family and I can't, I can't believe just how much growth oh my. has come in my family since we made the decision to leave this one church five years ago, five years ago, Pretty like when I made that, I was so scared. Talk. I was so scared, but I didn't know all the people that would be connected to me, how they would grow mm. by me making that one decision. Life changing, life changing, life changed through Christ, life changing. <laughs> like it's so life changing because when we made that decision to leave, I have been trying to get my sister and my brother-in-law. I love y'all to death. I'm not picking on y'all. I love y'all. But I've been trying to get them to come to church forever. <laughs> for 10 years. Call okay? about TJ. Call I was in this church for 10 years. Trying Call to get them to come about. to church. <laughs> trying to get them to come. Y'all come on out. Come on. I my brother-in-law. I'm not picking on you either, RJ. I love you, bro. But my brother-in-law. <laughs> Like he would come to church, he would show up. At, church would start at ten thirty. He mm. would get there at twelve o'clock mm. <laughs> and leave before the benediction. <laughs> I came to hear the word. I came here to hear the word, and word only. That's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> My sister in law, she she was there, but she wasn't there. Mm. And like, and it was just so. And when we made that decision to leave. Can I can I can I testify real testify. quick? When we made that decision, Lee, can I let you know every person that I just named out, they are currently in church and they're currently serving and their and their relationship with God has grown exponentially. Come on, bro. All because of the one decision that I made to leave. Mm. And it's so funny because we think, oh my gosh, what, what's going to happen? What's going to do? God will carry you through it all. Yes, sir. And I, I mean, and I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I did all that. No, I'm not saying I did nothing. This was all God Spiritual because the world. minute that God took me from one place of being spiritually immature to opening my eyes to showing me how dumb and blind and how spiritually immature I was to take me on this path of maturity. Now I'm able to live out my life in a way to where other people around me are like, I want to know about God. I want to know about this. I want to know about that. And now my sister and my brother-in-law, they serve faithfully in my church. On, they, uh, my brother-in-law is on the safety team. He, you know, he loves to shoot and he shoots people. I'm just playing. He don't shoot people. <laughs> but my sister, she serves. She loves serve. They, I, I can't even, I, honestly, I don't even know if they have missed a Sunday because I've seen them all the time. My brother-in-law, he, he sings on the worship team. Mm. I didn't even know this Negro could sing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like he sings. 
he sings. Like right? he can sing, sing. And right. it's so and it's so amazing to see them utilize their gifts. My right. sister in law, she's serving. She sings, putting the plug out there. Yeah. She sings. Uh-huh. But you know, it's like there's so many different gifts. My mother and my father in law, they come to the church. My dad, they come to the church. And it's like all these people that we were connected to, when we made that one decision to leave, it was like God just grew us all. Spiritually in that moment And this this is, is so amazing Because like when you feel like you're afraid Of doing something now Going back to that point I said earlier When you feel like you're afraid of doing something And God told you to do it Do it Absolutely. afraid Anyway I, I think it's major And I commend you For because Let me point out the fact that Spiritual maturity and spiritual growth Is being able to Hear God clearly and then moving immediately. Immediately. You got to move immediately because that is it's a ripple effect. You don't I don't think you know the effect or the impact you have on the people around you. Ooh, that part. When you truly trust God. Yeah. You know, and sometimes what happens is and let me encourage those that feel like what they're doing is not enough, it's not important. One thing I call him Pop. If y'all hear me call him Pop, it's my spiritual father. One thing Pop has taught me, he said, you never see grass grow. Mm. You never know when growth is taking place mm. and, and things are happening in your life and why they're happening. You may not know until later on in life why you did certain things. And it's a testimony to hear your testimony that when you really listen to God and you're, and you're truly trying to grow in God, then there are certain things that you're just going to do because he said it. Yeah. Even if it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's very important in this time because we're coming to a point where spiritual maturity Mm -hmm. is going to determine how this country is ran. Come on. How we keep getting back to that? <laughs> they Low want us to go there. We keep going back to that. It's going to don't run from it, Marcus. To, don't run from it. <laughs> it's going to determine so much because yeah. I think we as believers, number one, the first thing, if I was to give you guys something to think about or something to really to, to really dwell on, is what is it that we really need? Mm. What is it that we really need? That's good. And bec- and then when you find out what you really need, and in in finding that out, you need to go to the Word of God. You need to understand what's around you and your community. You need to know understand what's going on in your city and your state. Yeah. You need to understand everything. You really need to do your homework mm-hmm. because if in turn you don't understand that, and you're not you're not spiritually mature enough to choose someone to be in office. Mm. Because then you're doing things out of ignorance. Yeah. And a lot of us are doing things out of, out of ignorance. ignorance. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, spiritual maturity. Yeah. Spiritual maturity. And the one way that you grow is through fasting, praying, Let's get it. staying in the word, always staying before God, keeping worship music around you at all times. I know I say this all the time. Every time I fast, I, I have gospel music playing. I have the word going. Um, honestly, because when I'm hungry, when I want some chicken, when I want some, I want some, want some now. When I want some <laughs> some Popeyes, just randomly. Honestly, some. I wanted some Popeyes. Like <laughs> I, <was driving. laughs> I think I'm gonna give me some Popeyes right, right, because I think a, that's confirmation. You know, that's, black that's food. A, right, that's confirmation. Yeah, it's a Popeyes some anointing Popeyes. in the room. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh God, yes, <laughs> yes. If y'all want to endorse, please. Ah, yeah. But okay. <laughs> all right, but, you know, when you want to do all those things and you know that you can't have, it was like you have to go back to the reasons why. Mm. Why do you want to fast? Why are you fasting? Why are you um, reading your word? Why are you staying uh, before God? It's for spiritual maturity. Yes, sir. And so I was talking to my wife about this the other day, and we were talking about fasting. Um, and what's so amazing is is that you know God has prepared us for a season, and it's and it's so weird because. When we were like a couple years ago, when she was pregnant with our um with our son, our youngest son, um, she had to go through this entire season of being um, she had gestational diabetes, mm-hmm. so she had to transition how she ate and everything like that. So we pretty much ate 
a very boring <laughs> diet. Mm-hmm. You know, if your wife pregnant, whatever she eats, we all got to eat it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So she ate. Uh, uh, she did a, a vegan and a plant based diet um, during the pregnancy for some for some por- for some portions of the pregnancy, and so and now. Uh, it's so amazing because it's like when when people are fasting and they're going through seasons of fasting, they're asking her. It's like, well, we're we're staying away from this, we're staying away from that. What? How can we eat this? How can we eat that? And she's a resource now, based off of a season that she was, you know, in a, a while ago. And it's like you don't understand the reason why you're going through the things you're going through in the past. It's because you know God is preparing you for something that you know that is needed for in the future. That's another whole another podcast, a whole other topic and episode right there. But it's like you want to think about the why with the with the fasting. Why do we fast? And I think what's so amazing, what's so important about that is that the detail behind trying to figure out what we can and can't eat, what we can and can't do this, being creative and now having to come up with creative ways to do this, it's because of the fact that you're out, you're now showing that you can do something for God despite of what the enemy is telling you what you cannot do. The enemy will tell you or will lie to you and say, oh, you can't, you can't fast, you can't do that, you can't do this. But God is telling you right now, it's like, if you're able to settle down, if you're able to structure this fast, if you're able to do all of these different details, to plan this, plan that, do this, do that, God is now showing you like, okay, you have the ability to do more <laughs> than what you think that you were able to do. And it's, and it's so amazing that I was reading in Daniel when he fasted. The two reasons why he fasted, the first reason why he fasted was because um, everybody knows, him for, you know, if you don't know Daniel chapter one, I'm not going to assume, you know, but in Daniel chapter one, he fasted to to um, abstain from eating uh, what the king had mandated for the entire uh, country of Babylon to, to eat. He wanted to set a set aside because he worshiped God and God alone, him and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Um, not the bad Negro, but a bad Negro. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, they all took a stand to to eat and to abstain, and they only ate vegetables and water, um, and and they uh, they refused choice foods. Well, in Daniel chapter ten, Daniel does another fast. The reason why he does that fast, and he only ate simple foods and oh. drank water. He did that because of the fact that he was afraid of what God was showing him in visions mm-hmm. and in dreams. Um, and he was afraid because of the fact that he understood the what was going on around him. The reasons why you should fast, and the reason why you should fast, especially in this election season, especially with everything that's going on in this season, you can turn on the TV and you see everything that's going around in this country. You know the issues you you know how hard it is for you to buy groceries. You know how hard it is for you to do all these different things. This is why you should fast. You should fast because of the why. Because you know that you need God to do something for it, not just for you, but for this country. You recognize you're afraid of what's to come, what's either going to happen or what's already taking place. And I'm not saying that you got to be afraid and be in fear and all this other stuff. But the, the, the intent behind that is understanding that if you reverence God, if you serve the God of the Bible, you want his provision, you want his protection, you want everything that he has for you, and you want to get closer to him like never before so that you can be prepared for what's to come. Yes, sir. So. And I think just piggybacking off of fasting, it, it does so much. I'm a, I am a... Oh, you be fasting. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, you you inspired me. I know I never... I never Share this to you publicly, but you've inspired me to like to fast even more. Cause wow. like, so we talk all the time. Me and my yeah. brother, we talk all the time. Yes, so, sir. But this this Negro, he fast. Like. <laughs> and and I'm gonna tell you, and this is w- where I come from, and it's amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, wrap it up because uh, my mother, mama, 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 Dukes, mama, Dukes, she, mama Dukes, Dukes, she she ready. Anyway, she ready to eat. We don't anyway, want you, we don't want mama to whoop nah, you. Nah, nah, can't old. do that. I'm too grown for that. <laughs> She need old celebrate to celebrate my birthday. Yeah, dang, <laughs> anyway, um, but um, one of the reasons why I fast a lot and I, I would do it a lot, and I've come to a season where I'm grateful. I, I realize how much it has paid off, and I watch God literally deliver me from a lot of things. Was that very reason? Mm-hmm. There was a hunger in me mm-hmm. um, that I had for God, 
but there was also a war going on mm. in me yeah. at the same time where most people who are in the church but won't admit that they have influence but won't admit that they have a position but yeah. won't admit that there is always a war going on they think it's they're always, past that it's yeah. a war going on so i had a war so i would constantly fast and pray because i wanted to be free yeah and to be able to walk as the man of god as he chose me to be mm-hmm. So, so the reasons you fast on a personal level, on a personal level, outside of preparing for what's happening in the country, is because you want God. Jesus made the statement in Mark 9. He was talking to a, a man came to him, to his son, or with his son. The son had what they call back then a dumb spirit or a speechless spirit. He wasn't, he was, he was gnashing it and girding at the teeth and different things of that nature. And nothing could get this boy free from what he was dealing with. Mm. And Jesus, of course, being who he was. And a lot of times people can be like, well, that's Jesus. He's God. <laughs> he can do that. No, <laughs> but he makes an important statement because the disciples said, you know, we was trying our best this, that, and that and the third. He said, he made a statement. He said, this kind yeah. only comes, comes by prayer and fasting. Mm-hmm. There is a kind that everybody deals with. Yeah. There is a kind that we all struggle with that we have to let go in order to operate in our full potential yeah. and the full power that God has given us. Yeah. But it only comes by prayer and fasting yeah. and turning down your plate and being able because you won't know when you fast for real, mm-hmm. your, 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 your temper is a little short, mm-hmm. but you recognize you'll be like, why did that make me upset? Yeah. Why did why did I get mad over that? Mm-hmm. You'll start to point things out about yourself like how did I even that even happen? But the truth of the matter is you would have never saw it had you not turned down your plate. Wow. You would have never understood your character or what's in your character had mm-hmm. you not turned down your plate. Yeah. So as I fast and prayed a lot, I'm in a season where, you know, I've been trying, but I, you know, I ain't feeling the unction. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to my sister and I was like, you know, it's crazy because she's a little older than me. I have a sister, a spiritual sister. She's older than me. Mm. And I was talking to her, you know, her Kim. Yeah. I was talking to Kim and I said, uh, yo, sis, this is weird. You know what I mean? Because, you know, normally I'm always on my fasting thing. I mean, always. <laughs> always. I said, but, you know, I, I may do it a day or two, but yeah. it hasn't been like, like my long ones. And, and I, we, you know, we would talk, but then the Holy Ghost gripped me. And said, I have freed you from what you was trying to be free from. Wow. Everything you were fighting for has already happened. Now your fasting and praying has needs new intentions, mm. needs a new why. Needs a new why. That's good. And, and, and in order, so now I have to, now, now my prayer life mm-hmm. has to increase. Mm-hmm. Because, and the reason why my prayer life has to increase, because I got to know when it's time to fast. Yeah. So I'm not in a place where I'm doing it so often. Mm-hmm. I'm in a place where, okay, God, what I have to be like a Daniel. Mm-hmm. Okay, do I need to do it this time for what? I need to maybe I need to hear so that I can speak to the king clearly to yeah. understand yeah. what's going on. So now my fasting has to be a little bit more intentional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. here's the thing: fasting brings you to a different level of belief. So it what do. was Jesus saying to the disciples? He said, Your belief is not there. Mm-hmm. Something's got to come through f- prayer and fasting. You, you got to get a deeper depth in your mm-hmm. belief yeah. because if your belief was there, cause he wasn't fasting at the time. All right. He wasn't, he wasn't fasting at the time. Mm-mm. So what made him say, he's saying that you got to go a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. You got to understand a little bit more mm-hmm. in order to understand it because he was able to call out what it was. You deaf and dumb spirit. Yeah. He knew what the spirit was mm-hmm. that came by praying and fasting. It makes you precise. It puts you on the right path. Mm-hmm. It puts you in a certain mindset and a certain focus. Yep. This is part of spiritual maturity. Yeah. And here's the unique thing, bro. The unique thing, bro, is again, the world utilizes this. Yeah. You got intermediate they do. They fasting do. Mm-hmm. and they'll use it to lose weight. Mm-hmm. And having no idea that they're getting more focused in mm-hmm. the process. This is a godly principle. Yeah. It's a godly principle. Period. And the thing is, like, the enemy knows this. And so the world knows this. And then know, the world knows that there's so many spiritual benefits that come uh-huh. through fasting and through all these things that they try to deny that it's in this book. <laughs> they try to deny it's in this book. <laughs> but it's so many benefits that come from the word of God. Yes, so, sir. all right, yeah, we're going to wrap it up. So,
Um, bro, I appreciate you. No doubt. Appreciate you all for tuning in and checking us out. You can follow us on social media at We Are One Faith uh, on all platforms, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're not on Twitter. But I was going to say or X. We're not on that. That <laughs> X needs to be delivered. Okay. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I know what y'all be doing. Right. <laughs> and the Lord okay. sees it all too. Okay. But um <laughs> But um but yeah, so yeah, I love y'all. Y'all have a good one and we'll see y'all next time. So All right, man. Y'all be easy. <laughs>